On today's show, VW's board revolts against its chairman, a look at the new member of the Fiat 500 family, and how rapid prototyping is helping with car design. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for April 17th of 2015. Chairman Ferdinand Piek has ruled the Volkswagen Group with an iron fist since 1993, but it looks like his board just revolted against him. Earlier this week, Piek said in an interview he would no longer support CEO Martin Winterkorn to replace him as chairman. But VW's supervisory board just announced they believe Winterkorn is the best person for the job and plan to extend his contract. That would clearly leave him in line to replace Piek. Is this the end of the story? Don't count on it. Piek is a tenacious executive and doesn't give up easily. Not only that, today is his 78th birthday and he's not going to take kindly to this kind of birthday present. Chinese automaker Geely, which owns Volvo, is gearing up to start selling cars in the US. Reuters reports that the company plans to introduce a new compact crossover next year, which will first debut in China in 2017 and then will be brought to the US and Europe afterwards. The CUV will be based on a common architecture and offer engines that it's developed with Volvo. Technically, this wouldn't be the first Chinese car in America. As you may remember a few weeks ago, we told you that a company called Green Wheels USA has partnered with Uber to offer its drivers the chance to rent or lease BYD E6 electric vehicles. We'll be back with more news right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems. Breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. Audi has been giving a look at its future design direction with the Prologue family of vehicles. First came the two-door Prologue, then we got a four-door Avant version. And now it's taken that car and made an off-roading all-road model which will debut at the Shanghai Auto Show. The biggest change to the concept car, besides ride height and color, is that the plug-in hybrid powertrain replaces the diesel engine with a twin-turbo V8, which when combined with the electric motor, puts out more than 730 horsepower. You may notice a few of the design touches in the new R8, but more of the features, including interior options, will be seen on the upcoming Audi TT. The all-new Jeep Renegade recently made its debut, and now FCA's other compact crossover, the Fiat 500X, is set to make its entrance. Even though both models share the same architecture, the 500X has a starting price $2,000 higher than the Renegade, $18,000 versus $20,000. While there are differences in styling between the regular 500 and the X, you'll instantly recognize the CUV as part of the 500 family. The interior has a simple layout, which makes it easy to use infotainment and climate controls. It doesn't feel like you're in a compact either. You sit a bit higher than you normally would in a car that's this size. Two powertrains are offered for the 500X, a 1.4-liter four-cylinder with a six-speed manual, or a 2.4-liter mated to a nine-speed automatic transmission. It's also available in front or all-wheel drive. We spent most of our time in the 2.4-liter with front drive. The engine is a bit buzzy, but it doesn't lack power and capably handled the hills and turns. Look for the 500X to start hitting dealers soon. The first shipments from Italy started earlier this week. All of the luxury brands have design studios, so owners can customize their vehicle just the way they want them. And now Dodge is hoping to create some of that uniqueness for the Viper with a new online customizer. There are over 25 million build combinations to choose from. Users are able to sit in a virtual cockpit, and Dodge will even send a painted 1 18th scale model just to make sure the color is right. A personalized badge on the instrument cluster of the finished car tops it all off. So if you're ready to buy, or just want to do a little dreaming, head over to www.drivesrt.com slash Viper. Coming up next, how 3D printing and materials like carbon fiber and aluminum are helping car design. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one 
and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work. Dow. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. To help cut costs and meet new safety and emission targets, automakers are adopting new materials and manufacturing techniques, but that also impacts design. On AutoLine this week, we're joined by three designers and they talk about how these new materials and techniques can help them style a car. I think the biggest thing is instant gratification because in the, in the past, you, uh, especially when we're making uh, something in the studio, you'd have somebody in the back, you know, it's like Santa's workshop making these parts with rapid prototyping with, uh, you know, working uh, with new untraditional or non-traditional materials. Um, we come up with solutions to problems that actually don't exist, but yet we find a way to integrate that into our process. And that's what's exciting about, it. not only at the, the school level that I see at some of the schools that I visit, um, but also you know, at the OEM level. What's, a, what's amazing to me is um, some of the schools that I visited where I see uh, some of the departments like interior or exterior design, like architecture, they use a certain uh, methods and, and uh, rapid prototyping uh, types of solutions that influence the automotive guys and gals. And I think that's awesome when you see that translation uh, into another curriculum. It's pretty, pretty neat. Darby, have you given any thought to this, all these new materials that are suddenly becoming available to automakers to play around with? I think that'll be really cool for the future if like the standards for today's you know, metal, um, aluminum, whatnot, carbon fiber bodies, if you can find a material that's stronger than that, but 3D printable, easier to make, then you could make a stronger car, more durable car with you know, cheaper, easier to make materials, which I think would be really cool. Yeah. And I think the customer is going to benefit, you know, when you think about the structure of a door, right, you have the interior door skin, <coughs> somewhere in there you have a glass that has to drop up and down and the, the rails that that travels on and all the clearance zones and then you have all the fixtures that, you know, attach everything together and then finally you have your, you know, your outer skin. Well, we've had um, co-molding now for a long time, but when we can do co-growing, then we won't even have all those kinds of different, uh, you know, clearances that are necessary. It'll just be sort of, you know, extremely compact. So the customer will have a lot more interior space. The frontal area will be reduced mm -hmm. and the whole thing will be lighter. Your engineering time will be shorter because you don't have to worry about draft angles and things like that. Exactly, yeah. So, uh, or that, die lock. It's, or die lock, all <laughs> yeah. that stuff. I mean, it's an exciting new world. There's a lot of great styling insight in that show, and you can watch that entire episode on our website, autoline.tv, right now. But that's all, folks. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.